In Africa, we know of the huge humanitarian crisis, but even when life becomes a daily struggle, there are stories of hope. Erica Hill is on assignment in Dadaab, Kenya, and is finding stories of survival in the world's largest refugee camp. There is such an effort to call attention to this crisis because the numbers keep growing. The numbers of children who have died and the numbers of refugees who are coming to camps right here in Dadaab. It has become so important that people like Dr. Jill Biden, the wife of the vice president, was actually here this morning in Dadaab, along with Senator Bill Frist and the head of USAID, Raj Shah, all to call attention to the problem and to plead with Americans to do their very best to help. Some of the families we have met here have walked for more than 100 miles through the desert, carrying with them little more than their will to survive. But as they find out once they arrive, that initial journey is really only the beginning. I had some, some goods and uh, a big farm. In four, for a bit of four years, there was no rain and the farm dried. And Nothing left for them in Somalia. Ismail and his family set out for Kenya, arriving into Dab on Sunday afternoon. Do you feel relieved at all now that you and your family are here? <coughs> at one point he feels relieved because he arrived here alive with his family. Once registered, there are basic supplies to help each family get started. A 21-day ration of food, a cooking pot, a tarp to make a tent. Too much to carry, so Ismail heads into the camp looking for help. You have a big smile on your face. He went to look for means of transport, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm worried he doesn't know the village, so I don't know when he will come back. Shafiro has been here for a month. After walking for 40 days, arriving with nothing, she and her family found refuge and hardship. You sleep on the mat. In the morning, it is very dusty, mm -hmm. heavy dust winds, and at night, very cold. She tells us water is a problem. Her neighbor, Isaac, has appointed himself the keeper of this tank. They always bring the water, but it's not enough. They always bring the water, but it's not enough. Yet despite the hardships, they would rather be here than starving in Somalia. And there is joy here. Look no further than the faces and the laughter of the children. There is also hope. Within an hour, Ismail was back with a cart and quickly on his way pulling his family toward a dream of a better life and a new beginning. And once they do get those supplies and they set out, they are essentially on their own, Chris. They exit the registration center, they have that pack of supplies with them, and then they have to go find a spot. It may be somewhere like this. This is the IFO extension area. It's the where one of the camps has really expanded. Uh, but to walk out here could probably take them at least an hour. So the family that you met, Ismail's family, what they were going to do, because it was about 4 in the afternoon when we left them, and sun sets at 6.30, was they were going to find a family further out, and camp with them for a night so that none of their things that they were just given were stolen. And then the next day, today, they would set out to find a place where they would start to make a home for themselves and create a tent, something like the ones you see behind us. Chris? All right, Erica, thank you.